Hey there. I wanted to take a quick break from Yemen to point out some really, really great news. The wave of radical Islamic terrorism is fading away. About a year and a half ago, I predicted that the fall in oil prices would lead to a decline in jihadi terrorism. This prediction comes from one of the central ideas of this Everybody's Lying About Islam series. Radical Islamic terrorism, or whatever you want to call it, isn't about the Quran or religion or thousand-year-old religious texts. It's about the amount of money that certain Gulf countries have to pile into funding Islamic extremism worldwide. Islam isn't the problem. Saudi Arabian Islam is the problem, and it's oil money that fuels that poison. I have gotten a lot of pushback on that. Most of the anti-Islam critiques that I get in the YouTube comments are cut and pasted from just a few sources. There are two sources that bigoted commenters use more than any other. The first is Dr. Bill Warner, a guy who's got PhDs in math and physics, but has set himself up as an anti-Islam guru for some reason. The degree to which this guy abuses history is extraordinary. He relies on an audience that doesn't get history from any other source and completely lacks context. I may do a video about him at some point, but I recently published an answer on Quora that dismantles much of his work. You can find a link to that in the description. The other source is thereligionofpeace.com. This website claims to provide a comprehensive list of terror attacks across the world. It's pretty nuts. The vast majority of the incidents come from active war zones like Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. The website claims that it is dedicated to the idea that Islam presents an ideological threat to human dignity and freedom. The list of atrocities is supposed to be a big part of that project, but including all these deaths from Iraq and Syria that have as much to do with George W. Bush as they do with Islam isn't exactly fair. The people at the Religion of Peace website are being dishonest to prove a point. The list is weirdly useful, though. A year and a half ago, I claimed that the fall in the oil price would result in a fall in jihadi terror worldwide. Gulf money fuels both the attacks in the West we talk about and the attacks in the non-Western war zones that we don't talk about. Interestingly, and for the worst reasons, the Religion of Peace website has provided a great data set to judge my prediction by. So let's see how I'm doing, uh, according to the most Islamophobic set of figures imaginable. In 2014, the year oil prices peaked, 33,463 people died in terror attacks supposedly attributable to Islam. In 2015, the figure was 27,595. In 2016, the figure was 21,237. And in 2017, we've only got 10,526 deaths. We're only three quarters of the way through 2017, so let's estimate that we'll end up with 14,000 or so deaths. So deaths have fallen by almost two-thirds over just four years. There will be more terror attacks, and some of them will be spectacular. But it's worth looking at some of these recent attacks in a little more detail. Trucks are now the main weapon of choice. The money necessary for large networks and expert bomb attacks is no longer there. The failed attack in London this past Friday is a great indication. A poorly made bomb failed to explode. Terrorism funding is falling with the oil price. Hilariously, even the most Islamophobic data set shows that this is the case. Radical Islamic terrorism is fading away. That is amazing news. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you want to know more about terrorism, the oil price, and the US Saudi relationship that's at the root of it all, I suggest you check out my essay, Everybody's Lying About Islam. Thanks.